Hello my friends, I am Sarah from Grace in My Space and today we are talking about thrifting and upcycling. Today we're actually gonna go shopping at a local thrift store. I'm gonna find some really cool finds. We're gonna come home and DIY them in this video so that you can see what to look for when you're thrifting and then watch the process in the transformation. There are a lot of different ways that you can go about thrifting. You can hit up local thrift stores. You can search Facebook Marketplace or Craigslist or other online sources. You can go to flea markets and antique markets. There are lots of different opportunities to upcycle somebody else's junk into something that you love. There are three main things that I look for when I'm thrifting. The first is condition. Is it sturdy? Is it gonna fall apart as soon as I try to update it? The second is its shape. Is it something that I can change the color of or the texture of or one of those other aesthetic elements and still love the way it looks? Let's talk about shape for a second. This is one of my absolute favorite DIY updates from a thrift store. Guess how much I paid for this? 50 cents. You wanna know what color it was when I bought it? Barbie pink. I actually have an awesome tutorial on the blog that I will link for you in the description showing you how to update any kind of ceramics to make it look like pottery. The third thing is potential. Try to think about what it could be used for rather than what it was intended to be used for. Now there are some elements that you should always look past. I know that color tends to get a lot of people stuck. You should always look past the color of an item. You can change color very easily on most surfaces. Exhibit A. The second thing that you can look past sometimes is texture. Perhaps you found a vase that's the right shape, but maybe it has bubble texture on it that you don't like. You can take things like that and smooth it out with different products. You can sand things down if it's sandable, and you can create a whole new texture on something as long as it's the right shape. You can update the color, and it's gonna serve a purpose for you. With those things in mind, let's go shopping. This is a great example of looking past color to the shape of something. This piece right here is a great example of, uh, say you didn't like these, you could just break them off. Just break them off, redo the color on it, and have a really cool looking pottery piece. In this section here, you can find any shape that you want and you can make it look like a pottery piece with my tutorial. All right, you guys, we've got our haul here. I found some really cool things thrifting. I also have some things on hand that I've been wanting to update, these two pieces of pottery and these candle holders. And we're gonna walk through how I'm gonna change everything here. So this piece actually is pretty cool on its own. It could be something that you keep as is, but I'm gonna lighten it. Then I got these picture frames, which are an outdated finish on the wood portion, but the matte shape is actually really modern. And so we're gonna update this to be a modern frame. They were $6 each. This piece is a really great example of looking at shape and condition and looking past color. And then there are always those finds that you come away with that you're pretty excited about as is. I love this little stone pedestal. I don't need to update it at all, but I could if I wanted to. So, I think it's time to DIY. Let's go. All right, now there's, got a little weeble wobble going on today. Just ignore that, that's gonna be pretty common for me. We got a little prep work to do first. Once you've gotten the tags off, make sure and feel, oops, see like right here, for any sticky residue. If you have a residue from stickers, a little drop of lemon oil, it's just a essential oil, right on a Q-tip or a um, cotton ball here. We'll take off that residue really, really easily, really fast. You can leave it all together, tape the top if you wanna protect the wood, or for this one, there's only three screws, so it'll be really easy just to remove it and save myself some hassle. Make sure and put your screws 
somewhere safe that you will remember, aka in plain sight, otherwise you'll just lose them. Ta-da! Now the top of this is actually a really nice finish. I don't mind the color. If it wasn't a nice finish or I wanted to change the color of the wood, I could just sand it down or strip it, refinish it really easily. But I'm gonna save myself some time and keep it as is. Put the screws with the top. This is actually a really nice finish. So if you'd found this in the thrift store and you like the color, I would just leave it as is. But if you wanna update the color, you can do any color spray paint you want on metal like this. Really, really great surface for spray paint. I like this color as one option and this color, an ultra matte flat black. Say that five times fast. What I would do is take whatever wood finish you are gonna have and compare which color you like best with the finish of the wood. Make sure and take into consideration the, the room that it's gonna be in, the elements of the room, and just have it fit your style. All right, now let's take a look at this frame, get it prepped. You can see that what's holding it together is these little staples. So I'm just gonna use my tool and peel them back. Now I wanna keep the existing mat gently Make sure that all your staples are really pushed up before you try and pry that glass out. And here's another great use for the scridget. I tried to peel this off with my fingernails and it was like, it wasn't fun. But the scridget has two sides. So you can either use the scraper side or you can use the fingernail side. Can you see the sticker mark? That's where we'll put another drop of lemon oil on there. And the residue is gone and I will just use my glass cloth to clean this up when I'm ready to reinstall the photos. And now that we have the frame completely separate, which is what we will be updating, it's important to clean it really well. You can just use soap and water if it's not too bad or a higher strength cleaner if it's really grimy. All right guys, I got my setup here for spray painting. A couple of things about spray painting. Number one, don't even try it on a windy day. This day is a little bit windy, barely, but almost bordering on why am I trying. Number two, make sure and put it in an area where you don't care if there's overspray. I usually pop my pieces onto some cardboard and then put them in the grass so that any overspray can be chopped off with the mower. All right, one thing I always do when I am painting surfaces that have a flat edge that you want to paint, make sure put something down on your cardboard to prop it up. That way you're not missing this edge right here because it's laying right on your cardboard. This will just elevate it and allow you to get a really clean finish. Make painting diamonds that you can buy. I just grab whatever's in the cupboard. Tuna cans work really good. I'm gonna try using this kind of brass color. It's a little bit darker than normal brasses. I'm hoping it's gonna look like an antique finish, but a lot of you are probably gonna say, why are you spray painting something that already looks like brass? And it's because this finish actually has kind of a weird polka dot streaky texture that I'm just not a fan of. So I'm just gonna update it with one that I hope I will love. If you've never spray painted before, there are two main things you need to be aware of. Number one, never start your spray on the piece. Always start on the outside edge and work your way over. The second thing is very similar. Never hold your can while you're spraying in one spot. You need to have continuous motion the entire time. Not what I was looking for. Black it is. When you're spray painting, make sure and do really light coats, but multiples of them. So you're supposed to spray paint just a really thin layer, wait a minute, another thin layer, and wait a minute. If you need a third coat, you can, but usually you can get it in two. Rather than doing one really heavy coat, that's just gonna cause it to streak. All right, my friends, today we are gonna tackle some of these smaller pieces. This piece is a terracotta wine cooler, as says on the stamp. I got it for $3.99 
And while I don't mind the finish as it is, there's really nothing wrong with it. I just wanna lighten it up and have it feel a little bit aged, a little bit more organic. And so I'm gonna use this antique white wood stain and see what happens. So when I'm staining, a lot of people will use a brush. I, I cut up my husband's old work undershirts and it works really well as a rag because they are completely lint free. One safety precaution, make sure that you lay your rag flat outside or in a well ventilated area to fully dry before you dispose of it. Because if you throw it away, crumpled up and still wet into a trash can or a hot area, they can combust and they are flammable. Many people have actually lost their homes that way. So let's avoid that. Here we go. So I'm gonna kind of just use the bottom and see what happens, because the bottom doesn't matter. It's gonna be completely covered up. Ooh. I like it. All right, we're safe to go. So this one's gonna be really, really simple. Wipe on, wipe off. Feels a little bit like Karate Kid. And I'm doing it quickly to avoid streaks because I don't really want it to look like I've wiped something on here. I want it to look like it's been aged naturally. Buff it out really, really well. Now I'm gonna come back through and try and tackle that top. It's a little bit more tedious. A brush actually would probably be better for the top, but I'm too lazy to go get one. And that one's for a different project. Have you ever stained terracotta before? I haven't. This is new to me, but it seems to be working pretty well. Now that lightened it up pretty significantly. It was orange before but I think I need another coat. Another way that you can line terracotta is with a whitewash, which is actually what I'm gonna do on my next piece of pottery, but I wanted to experiment and see what the stain did. Now we're gonna update this piece. Now this piece, let me show you up close. You see the red in this piece? And there's green hints as well. It has great texture, but the color is not my favorite. The shape is awesome. So I have this leftover sample paint. It's a pretty color. It's the same color I did my decking in. I, am, I have put about a quarter cup of water in here and we're gonna whitewash it. So I'm gonna add about the same amount of paint. I'm gonna stir this up. I think I had too much water in there. It's very watery. Whitewashing 101, pour the paint in first, add the water second. I'm gonna put on my apron because whitewashing is really splattery. It's a very liquidy version of paint because you've added water to it. Whitewashing is basically just taking paint. I'm just using a latex paint interior and adding water to make it watered down. It gives you a lighter finish, it doesn't fully cover texture. It's just a new hue that you're kind of layering on top of your existing color. Now your consistency can be whatever you want, really. The thicker the consistency, the more coverage you're gonna have, the thinner, the less coverage. Usually people call this a whitewash because you use white paint, which makes sense but I'm actually using a neutral color. It's a tannish color, kind of taupey, and just using the same method. Now that I have an obscene amount of paint for this small project, let's get painting. Now again, I don't know if I'm gonna like this color, so I'm gonna start on the bottom because the bottom is where no one sees. Hmm, all right, <laughs> I think it's too thick, which is ironic because it's really thin. So what I think I'm gonna do, it's kind of soaking in as I sit here. I think, what happens if I dab it off? Ooh, 
Ooh. This has some of that stain left on the rag. And as I dab it off, it's depositing some of the stain. <laughs> A happy little accident. All right, so now that I saw that that was kind of cool, I am going to work in sections and paint this baby up. I'm gonna wipe on the paint, getting a little bit of the stain on there. I'm actually gonna kind of get it pulled off a little bit. I'm just gonna dab, see what happens. See what I want to not have happen is this situation. You see that? where my finger is actually pushing the stain in more than I want it to be. I just want it to be a dab. I like this piece so much better when I'm done. I almost put this in the yard sales pile because those red and green hues were just throwing me off. It looked, it looked fake, even though it's real pottery. So the next time you're pulling together your yard sale pile, Look at a piece and think, how can I change this to make it better? I got my rag. I'm gonna go over it. Oh, that was a big one. Gotta, ooh. <laughs> Gotta blend that baby. That was a lot right in one spot. Let's try this. See how that works. Oh, that actually was kind of nice. Now what I'm gonna do before this dries too much, now that I've kind of smacked it with my stain rag, is I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna use a dry one on it. Kind of help blend it a little bit more because at this point my rag is so saturated that it's just gonna keep depositing heavier amounts that I don't really want there. So I'm gonna hurry up get this part done so that I can use a dry rag. Now I'm gonna go over it with my dry rag and blend some of those areas that were splotchy from just, you know, whacking it with my rag. All right, now for our final piece, this guy. So this piece actually has a good color foundation. I'm not a huge fan of how that texture looks down here compared to up here, it's like it goes away. And so I wanna fix that. I don't know if this is gonna work. So what I wanna do is make it feel like puffy clouds all around here. And I'm gonna just scoop some up and slap it on and see how that works. You can do this with plaster, joint compound, Whatever you have on hand. It's kind of a gross noise, huh? Sorry about that. All right. I'm just gonna wipe it on. I don't know if this is gonna work, but we'll see. Instead of smearing, I'm gonna try globbing. I need a thicker consistency. I have an idea. All right, I'm gonna take some baking soda, dump it on in here. I'm gonna mix it up and see what kind of a consistency I can get with this. As you can see, most of my projects are experiment only. They don't always work out, but usually they do. Or if it's not what I was hoping for in the first place, I adjust my expectations very thick paste and see how it goes on. That's actually working much better. Just gotta thicken that joint compound up with some baking soda. So since we're just doing this out of nothing, you just gotta kinda play with it until you like how it looks. This would be a really awesome project to do with kids. 
not, I mean, it's like super messy, but it's not like splattery messy. Take them outside, give them a glove, make a paste of joint compound and baking soda, and let their imaginations go wild on an old piece that you find at a thrift store. Once it's dry, I'm gonna paint it. You know, the beauty of this is that if I really don't like it when I'm done with it, it doesn't matter because I paid like 50 cents for this piece. Now, while we're waiting for all of this to dry, I have these two pieces. They are wooden candle holders. I bought them last year. They are from the Hearth and Hand line. It's actually, it says it's a vase. I thought it was a candle holder. <laughs> How would you guys repurpose these? Drop it in the comments. She's not dry, but I feel like it could be kind of a cool texture if I paint over it not fully dry and see what the brush does to the compound. So, <laughs> here goes nothing. I don't love it. Normal people probably would have waited a couple of hours and just seen what happened, but Who's got time for that? Hmm, hmm that's kind of cool. Let's see what happens. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna paint it all down, and then I'm gonna smush it all up. All I'm really trying to do at this point is give it a, a blended look so that it doesn't feel like I covered it in joint compound and then put baking soda into it and then painted it. We don't want it to feel like what I actually did. Let's just add in some slap texture. I think we found our method. Slap texture is the way to go. And there we go. Once it was fully dry, I decided to sand it down and get rid of some of that high edge to the texture. And what it did is it left me with those puffy clouds that I was looking for in the beginning. So the next time you decide to go thrifting, make sure never underestimate the power of paint and some creative thinking as well. Some of my favorite pieces are the ones that I have updated myself into a style that is more complementary to the rest of my home. And sometimes you just have to be really persistent. Thanks for doing some thrifting with me today. Make sure to hit that subscribe button for more to come.